Hello and welcome to this Train Sim TV video. My name's Tom and today we're going to be looking at Rivet Games' Benina line. The Benina line starts from Posciavo to Tirano and it features 22 kilometers of meter gauge route from the Cadera to Tirano, complete with RHB signaling system, a random request stop feature, highly detailed station model and custom scenery and infrastructure throughout. We're starting our service here at Tirano and we're going to get our train set up and we're going to head over and do a full run of the route for you. We're going to get ourselves set up and get ready for departure. So, get the doors open. We're on a career scenario as well. So we'll be able to see how well I can actually do under career um, pressures. So we're going to put our train into forward. Headlamps on. And we are set. We also have our cruise control limiter. This is controlled by Y and C. Y makes it go higher and C reduces the speed. The route is available from two separate places. You can pick it up either from Steam and Just Trains' website. Um, they're both $19.99, but the upside is if you purchase it off uh, Just Trains' website, you do get 95 reward points. Um, whereas on Steam, you just get the route without any reward points at all. Our train today is the ABE 8-12 Allegra EMU in RHB livery. We're also hauling a rake of BEX Benina Express panoramic coaches in RHB livery. They've also got some lovely weathering on these, the snow effects as well as you can see down the uh, on the bottom of the unit and around the wheel set and along with all the carriages. I'm just going to pause it for a moment, just so we can have a little look around. So I love these panoramic views um, and these windows. So when you go in old, we'll do the passenger view as well shortly when we get moving. But the lovely wagons, really nicely detailed. The route also features some uh, freight wagons, one being these log wagons. So these are the SP-W timber wagons. There is also an LB-V container wagon and a ZA oil tanker wagon. We should hopefully be able to see these throughout the run. Just a little overview as well of Tirano. Lovely detail through, oh there's the, the container wagons over here as well. So that is the LB-V. Not too sure if these are like refrigeration containers. Certainly something like they've got um, some electrical plugs there. Not sure if they're for the brakes or not. Then that though there would be um, air pipes for the brakes. So I'm not overly sure if that's possibly to do with refrigeration. Some nice detailing. Let me go back into the cab. Get ourselves ready. We're we'll ready for departure quite shortly. So this train is going to call at uh, Campocolone, or Campocolono, <laughs> shocking pronunciation just to let you know, um, La Paris and Posciano only. Passengers are now boarded the train, please proceed at 13.32 to the next timetable stop of Campocolono <laughs> when the signal is clear for departure. So our signal is just down there on the floor, you can see with the arrow, that is our line ready for going, uh, for proceeding. So we have our speed set up at the minute, which is up to 30. We will not go over this well that's set up. Again, C makes it go lower, and Y makes it go higher. So we need to start slowing down anyway. Down to 15. So we'll set that down to 15. And slow ourselves down for our first speed restriction. So again, the key feature of the 22 kilometer meter gauge route from Cadero to uh, Tirano. It has the RHB signaling system, random request stops, which are basically noted by you'll get a little diamond sign, which will either be lit up or you'll get a audible uh, binging sound. And you see the H, 
that lights up orange. Um, basically, that's yes, been uh, stop requested. You'll get the lights on on the, on the little sign if there is a passenger at the platform wanting uh, the train to stop. You get highly detailed station models and custom scenery infrastructure throughout. You get the ABE 8-12 Allegra EMU, which is what we're driving, and of course the panoramic coaches, the wagon, and then you also get five career, free bell fan mode, and one passenger mode. On top of that, you also get a free roam scenario too, and of course the route is quick drive compatible. So it's 15 kilometers an hour until we get through the crossing area. This section, I love this section, we uh, travel through the town. It has a sort of tramway feel to it, and for me that's quite um, a big yes. Uh, as a lot of you know, I am a fan, uh, quite a big fan of tramways. Um, of course, being a, a tram driver in the past for Blackpool Transport, um, I'm also a volunteer heritage tram driver. So running down on like streets like this is what I do in my voluntary role. With driving trams on the uh, on the main line for the local tramway. So you can see the details going to this route. It's absolutely stunning. Like you see all these this town area. You got loads of cars around. You got benches and cafes and stuff like that. It's absolutely stunning. We have also got a snowy scene. I did this on the, the JT stream, um, and it was on a sunny one, but I found um, that the run I did only went so far. But to get the full run, we're going to go through a winter version of the run. But it is Switzerland, and it is prone to the snow, of course. So we're not too far from the 25 uh, kph speed uh, increase. Other little features is you get the opening doors and windows, so you got a windows there. And you have a door to open up also. You have the... This is the uh, unit itself. Various different views, so you can stand up. We've got little maps on the table as well, really cool. Got a few different views there. You can see in the cab as well. I'm just going to flick back through to the uh, the panoramic cars, which are absolutely stunning. We've got nice leather seating, lovely carpet in it as well. These big glass windows just age you to see the whole route as you pass through the uh, the winding country. As you pass through the hillsides. River Games have done a fantastic job with this stock. It's not my usual. Um, thing to drive but I found that they are really really easy to drive and really easy to get into the hang of driving them as well um, like with the signaling system uh, the stock itself is really easy to drive it has that re realism level it makes it really convincing that you're driving the real thing and it's a really nice feel when you sit in these carriages Got the scroll in the dot matrix over there as well. It says, well, welcome on board. Welcome aboard the Benina Express machine. It says, yep. So, yeah, lovely. Really nice. And up the speed, actually, as well. We're just leaving the town and you can actually see how, how much this route winds and twists. You can see the train all the way over there. Mr. Audi man's just overtaken us. I'm 
stunning views. Really, really nice. I'm going to jump back into the cab because we do have a station which is not far away from our first stop. Campocologno is our next station. I will get it there. It takes me a bit to get the wording. I will pick up the pronunciation by the end of it. I can't be as bad as Mark as the other day when he did his West, um, Highland and Festiniog video. He really had some bad ones on that one to try and say. But we do pick the routes with the awkward names sometimes, so we do have to have a go at it. That's just acknowledging the uh, the signal. All the detail in these balconies, all the little plants and stuff in them, really cool. The over wiring as well is really, really nice. Plenty of detail involved with that as well. So the point indicator tells we're going to the right hand side. The old tanker wagon can be seen to the left, which is involved with the route. Lovely buildings, even the station buildings are fantastic. Well, this little artwork up here is really nice. Fantastic detail, really high quality. Passengers are now boarded the train. Please proceed at 1341 to the next timetable stop of La Paris when the signal is now clear, or when the it actually is clear for departure, so I think it should be, because it looked like it was before, which is that ground signal there. Also see the arcing on the pantograph. That now doesn't want to do it with it, it's just a little bit then. It's all randomised. There's a bit of a uh, terminal over here, which I think it's for oil. Looks like it's possibly an oil container, it's all, all stuff around here. It's like a little container loader or something as well there. So the longest scenario you get with the route is 55 minutes, which is this one. Um, they range between 30, I think, I think the shortest one possibly is 30 minutes. I'm just going to double check that if I can figure it out. I don't think, no it doesn't say where I'm looking at the minute. I think the lowest one's 30-ish minutes, um, range from 45 to 50 to 55, but this one is the longest. The, the, the passenger mode one is actually, a, you are a passenger on the wagon, uh, the carriage, the panoramic coach, and that takes you for a run. So you can just sit there and relax. There's more scenarios also available on the Steam Workshop for this, and possibly on other um, community websites.
up to 45 mile an hour for a short period. So in 1904 the revolutionary Abula line opened to traffic, stretching to the spa resort of St Moritz and ensuring the continuation of the railway connections in eastern Switzerland. It would only be opened for about a year before discussions of another railway were taking place, a line that heads due south through the Benina Valley, climbing to 2,253 metres, which is 7,392 uh, foot, before taking its descent towards the Swiss-Italian border. Oh, we're losing power here. Let's put a little bit on. Um, the new route would be most challenging yet. Having to climb and fall within a set distance meant many breathtaking half, uh, hairpin turns and some of the steepest gradients ever attempted by conventional rail were set to feature. The line opened in stages between 1908 and 1910 as an electric single track railway connecting Italy to the Swiss railway network. For the, first dec uh, for the first few decades of its life, the Benina Railway struggled to pay for itself after a costly construction, even tinkering with the bankruptcy line for some time. The line was rescued in 1943, following a takeover of the Rattian Railway at RHB, who upgraded the line quite substantially, including the remodel of the top to the pass, which originally constructed the scenery purposes, but was an avalanche danger zone. Since then, the line has established itself as a major tourist route for those who seek stunning views and the Alpine resorts, and has become the home of the Benina Express in brackets BEX, which connects Chur, Davos and St Moritz to the pass, complete with bespoke panoramic coaches to provide the best possible views. And it's also with thanks to the hard work and efforts of Rivet Games that you are able to take the same Benina Pass to its Italian terminus, all whilst traversing the iconic Brusolo Spiral Viaduct, which we will actually be passing shortly, um, and running through the streets of Tirano in Train Simulator 2020. So we're just coming up to the Spiral Viaduct now, which is the Abruzio Spiral Viaduct. Absolutely stunning bit of engineering. This is like a donut curve, it just goes right around itself and travels back up. So it's a big loop. Should be doing 35 there, but 30 is not an issue. Um, the route map as well, by the way, is uh, this one. There is a merge out there as well, I think it's on Workshop Danny Leach, um, which will be known as doing many different ver versions of merged routes, such as um, the South London stuff. He's done a merge with this and some of the other routes that connect onto each other. Um, so yeah, you can go further with this. I want to be a nice screenshot of this. Because I think this is an absolutely stunning asset. It's just trying to get the right. It's really cool when you watch it, just sit here and just watch it go around on itself. I'm just going to pause there. I'll try and get a decent shot. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. the curves are quite tight on this route the train does 
judder about a little bit, but it is just due to the nature of the, the tight curvature of the route. Six kilometres to La Presse. The speed does open up on the route as well, like, um, you do get runs of up to 60 kilometres down the line. Not they clues. Yeah, that's brilliant. So we have a halt coming up, the lights are flashing. So we'll be stopping at this next platform. This is Bruzio. There's a shop that's waiting for the train. to proceed you can also change destinations on this um, by clicking these buttons here the top one and the uh, bottom one just flick through you can't control this screen your horn as well which is on this little button Graph buttons as well. There's some fantastic super elevation in this route. The curves are so tight that when you're watching the train lean into me, it's, it's quite superb to watch. We'll go and uh, have a look at that in a moment. In the tightest of the curves are some really tight ones. Stuff like this. Look at that. It just winds around these curves, the uh, the hills and cutting walls and stuff. Not down that view as well, so we've we've travelled all the way down there. So if you look, you might you just see the track down there. So the the spiral viaduct we've come from all the way down there as well, which is there. You get a good view of that.
Oh, so the scenarios that are included are there is a tutorial, first of all, for the Allegrid, which is this unit. We've got an oil pickup, summer northbound, the BX winter northbound, which is this one, the autumn southbound, which are all the actual uh, drive, driving ones. And you've got um, three Velfan mode ones, which is um, one which is at uh, Mirror Largo Station, uh, another one which is at Bruzio Spiral Viaduct, which we've just been around. And then we're at Tirano Town. Passion mode is Cadero to Tirano, and then um, I think the three ones called Pasciavo Summer. The download size for the um, product off JT's website is 598 megabyte, but do bear in mind once you activate it on Steam it will become bigger once uncompressed. It does also state that it recommends a performance SSD uh, for better running of the route. It's quite an intense product. The lovely structure as well. This bridge, it's really nice detail on this. This could be a uh, screenshot potential, to be quite honest. The, the detail on this is absolutely beautiful. If you look under the bridge here, it's all separate slats of wood, so you can actually see the train underneath, and you can see the rails running over. And again on the top as well you see the, the detail on top of there. It's got the wire mesh walkway and then of course the wire, uh, the wooden slats. Then with the sleepers on top. The, the track's quite nice in this as well. Like You've got the bridge track there with the um, extra the bolts and you've got the, the check rail in the middle there as well. I'm not sure if that's just like a strengthening rail to be honest. It's not exactly a check rail because it's nowhere near the, uh, the actual wheels. I'm not actually sure what that's uh, for, but if anyone can actually uh, let us know what that is in the comments, that'd be nice. Nice to know. I'm going to go back in the cab because obviously we've got signals to adhere to. And we do have a flashing light over there, I think, so we'll, we'll be stopping at the next station. We do have a pickup. Someone's requesting the stop. Going on to the right hand side uh, line. We've got a massive lake on the right side of us here. This is Miller Argo. Huge, absolutely huge lake.
So we do climb up to 45 kilometers in a moment. Press is only just about two kilometers now. Speeding as well, so I'm just losing some peak, uh, my points now. It's all going well. Back down to 35 kilometers and then about half uh, a kilometer. One thing I'm certainly not uh, famed on is my career score. It's going to be really bad. I think the highest in minus I've had before was about 15,000 on the Warhead route. And that was just down to that. I couldn't drive the, um, the EMU that came with that route very well. And I was just getting later and later. Quite comical, really. We had a laugh about it on the stream. Again, the detail throughout is absolutely stunning. All the loft walls and stuff like that have been created. Really nice. This platform is quite an interesting one. It's like in the middle of nowhere. It's just on the side street. We enter the town again in a second, a bit more street running.
to a 30 kilometers through the town and then we open up to 60 for the first time on this run. The passengers now boarded the train. Please proceed at 14.01, which is a couple of minutes ago. Um, the next timetable stop of Pashiavo when the signal is clear for departure. I'm a little bit late. I love the snow textures on this, um, like on the hedges and stuff as well, it's quite nice. It's just not completely white, it's just got, it like, sort of gradually goes up. Some nice wall assets as well, nice gates, I like them. It's not something you see a lot of in TS, is uh, some good, good gates for like housing and stuff like that. <clears throat> Balconies on these buildings as well, really nice. Oh wow. A tire swing. I like that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I we're going to pass a service as well at the moment. To wait in the passing loop. <clears throat> kilometers I love how the passenger trains pull like a couple of wagons at the back of them some of these services really cool it's different Getting taken by the van. He's going for it. Can we take him on the inside line? No, nope, not yet. No, nope, he's going for it. <coughs> but we are going to walk back up to 60 in a second. So we haven't got the request stop for this one. The lights are not on on the sign coming up. You can see the diamond in a minute when it stops uh, lagging. There's no lights on that. We don't have the halt light up. We get an audible tone if that uh, light was to light up. Really long level crossing these. Just let the train through the street.
just under a kilometre now to Poshiavio. Have a little look around here as well whilst we do our stop. Just talk you through a few little bits and pieces about the uh, the buildings, just what the developers do in general, because there's some quite like, cool bits and pieces. We'll have a little look around the station now, uh, just while we're doing the pickup. There's um, some sheds down here and there's also this little miniature turntable which I think is absolutely brilliant. It's it's tiny. Um, I'm assuming it's for like moving diesel shunters. Um, there isn't any diesel shunters in the game though. Uh, I'm assuming though in real life there's some little shunters that run around here. Um, also these sheds, these doors, I do believe animate. Um, you can actually go into the shed so all the other buyers go through the um, actual gaps. And then you can actually go inside these. And then you can go back out of them again. Obviously the doors open and shut. And there's another shed over this side that does the exact same thing. Not so big, but um, this one's a bit shorter. But the other one is like more of it got like engineers working area, pits and stuff. I think this one does as well. Another short one there. That's little pits in it as well. Quite cool. Lovely station buildings as always. Passengers now boarded the train, please proceed at 1410 to Kadera, where another driver will take the, the train over and continue to St Moritz. So the last five kilometres sees us uh, continue now to Kadera. We'll try to drive this last section uh, without the hood, just to see how well we can do it. But it's 55 kilometers leaving the platform. <whistles> and immediately we start climbing. <clears throat> we will be covering some other Rivet Games routes um, down the line. So do keep your eye out for them. Uh, we've got the Goddard Barn, Sasselva. Uh, there's the other section of the Benini Pass, which is the longer one. So we'll end up doing that as well at some point. And don't forget there is the merges that are available in the workshop for other routes. So 
so the views open up quite a lot now um, as we climb. <clears throat> and so if we look at the map, oh, is that uh, we're down to 35. So as we look at the map, we've got um, this horseshoe curve section that we're going to go through in a moment. I think what we're running as well is the existing part of the old, the, the route before the run down to Torino was made. Um, so it just gives you a little bit more extra to drive. I'm hoping we might be able to see some tunnels. I can't remember if there's any tunnels at the top of this, but um, with these units, the pantographs, um, when you go to the tunnels, they go, uh, they compress and retract when you go towards the tunnel. It's quite cool to see. I thought there's been some special scripting uh, where the train sort of knows where it is. There'll be something in the track, I think, where it'll talk to the train so it tells it when it has to load its pantograph a little bit. sitting here again you can see the extents of the views now which are climbing up absolutely stunning the towns down there the monsters these hills these mountains are like hills the mountains aren't they absolutely monstrous I always praise Vivid Games for these uh, Swiss routes doesn't he? the terrain must be an absolute pig to work with Absolute pig, just how how steep it is as well with the draw distance in train sim. You can't obviously get the um, the whole hill side, mountainside, to be covered in trees. So unfortunately, it's as far as we can see it. But it's it's done really well. Ah, tunnel. Right, so if I go over here, we should see. Oh, it's already done it. Once we come out the other side of this tunnel found where it is. There it is. It goes up there. If you watch this, you should see the pantograph start rising up. There we go. You see it going up. Really cool. One of my favourite little features with the, uh, the train. We'll go straight down this way and then we're going to loop around again and that's it then, we're going to run up into Kadera.
not too far now from the loop road. We're just coming up to that now. We have another tunnel sort of thing. We sit up here. We should be able to watch the pantograph start dropping down any moment. I'm at Gadara. I do hope you've enjoyed this video as well guys, <clears throat> we will be featuring again uh, some more Rivet Games content quite soon. Links are in the description as well below um, if you do wish to have a look and purchase this product. Um, the better option would be go to JT where you get the reward points. It's exactly the same price it would be on Steam but you do get that extra little incentive. I'm just going to pause that. It's a strange station because it doesn't look like it's a station, but it actually it is. You just sort of like jump off. A little massive view down there. So yeah, we're going to end it here, guys. Uh, this is the end of the scenario. So a massive thanks to everyone that's joined us on this one. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget, you can join us on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash trainsimtv underscore Tom and trainsimtv underscore Mark, my channel which is uh, Trinity TV underscore Tom is the one that's uh, live the most, uh, usually on a Wednesday and a Friday from half seven to eight o'clock-ish um, start time uh, until we, when we finish, of course. Um, we do do extra streams here and there, so do look out for them. We have a time on Discord, Facebook and YouTube, uh, so do look out wherever you decide to find us. Uh, all links again will be in the description below, so a massive thanks to you all for joining us and we'll, we'll see you on the next one. Take care for now.